Alrighty, fellow geniuses, creative minds, builders, etc. I know you've seen this build before, but I have been developing a special tool. A tool that anyone can use as long as they know how to tweak it and set it up so that they could turn any of their really cool vehicles like this into something like this. Now you may remember this type of thrusting system from my learn to fly kind of music -y video. And um, all this pretty much is, is that system re, I guess, readapted and redeveloped and repurposed, I guess, to be totally redundant, so that you can make your own hover vehicles. Uh, we're going to be going over some really cool stuff. As you notice, the little thrusters there slightly angle forward and back. And we're going to go into why it does that and how it keeps stuff so stable in the air, even with oscillating frame rates in like the 33 to 35 frames. So guys, stick around. It's going to be a really cool video. You might learn a few things. You'll learn where to get this new tool. and. Uh, Start building your own floaters like this. All right, guys, stick around because the show is about to get started, yo. Okay, guys, let's start from a lift position here. The reason why I want to start from a lift position here is because it shows the thrust array in its default state, which is a really good way to explain how it works. The thrusters are pointed in directly towards each other when it's on the lift. And this is it this is it pretty much in its completely cancelled state. If you have four thrusters or two thrusters, pointed directly at each other. It doesn't matter what power levels you set them both at, as long as they're both at the same power level. They will completely cancel each other out. What we're doing here is we are rotating these thrusters downward to quantify the amount of thrust they're producing in a more granular way than you could ever possibly by just selecting the thrust levels. So pretty much you're using rotation now to really, 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 really fine tune exactly how much thrust we're shooting out of these thrusters. So let me take it off the list and you, and you will see how the thrusters direct themselves downward. And uh, I'm going to show you how you control, how you really fine, fine tune the control on these thrusters. Um, the thrust array will have one controller, which is this um, front left controller. Or if you're looking at it from this side, it will be the front right. But if you're looking at it from the outside, it will be front left. And you'll see that it has this first rotation editor set at 30 degrees. This is where you will adjust um, the starting thrust for the thruster. It's at 30 now. Say I move it to seven, not 75, maybe 45. And let's take, you have to put them both the same. Let's take a look at what happened with the thrusters here. They point more directly down. That will give you more thrust, but I want to put it back the way it was because that's the way it was. I've, that's, those are the numbers I finally came upon to give this thing a balanced thrust. So we had 30 in the front because this vehicle was heavier in the front. And uh, actually, no, it's, depending on where you connect it will determine how much lift these will need to do. So, like, I actually needed 45 degrees of non-canceled thrust, which means these are actually pointed up a little bit higher than these to get a balanced lift on this vehicle. So, when you get the thrust array from the workshop, you're pretty much just going to first try to get whatever vehicle you want to float as symmetric as possible. Then you want to make sure that you latch all these things on 
in a fairly, a kind of balanced way, but still you want it to look cool too. So if, there, if you need a differential thrust, I mean that's what this is all about, setting up differential thrusts and having a tool that allows you to just stick them on there and uh, go from there, but cool tool. Another thing to add to your tool belt. Um, I, it was the demonstration video showing you it can be done. You could take and repurpose a vehicle and just make it something that could fly. Um, as far as making this into a hovercraft, I'm not going to mislead you guys. Um, where you have your thrusters on the back of your vehicle will largely determine how well this will move. So if I launch, like I'm doing now, and we get into that stable hover, like I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. And um, then we apply our forward thrusters because they're not well balanced. Okay, this is actually flying a lot better than I thought it would right now. Because they're not well balanced, you're going to get a lot of oscillation. Sort of like we are floating on the ocean. So this is kind of like a watery thing. Whee! Into a tree, probably. But I mean, if you want that real ocean-going experience... Whoa! It's like, that's like we hit a tidal wave there. But, um... It's definitely something to play with. Something to have fun with. And something to crash with. But, um... This is a proof of concept, guys. This is me showing you guys how it works, how it does what it does, and how you wreck it. But um, we put our ideas out there, you download them, guess what? You improve upon them and take it to the next level. Or, I'm going to keep working on it too though, so let's see who gets there first. Take care guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope uh, you guys were inspired by the video, of course. and. Keep dreaming, keep building, take your ships, teach them how to fly. Your boats can learn how to fly too. Your cars can learn how to fly. Teach everything how to fly. Bye-bye. <laughs>